So welcome to Palo Alto, California, everyone. Stanford University, which is hosting the 2016 Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Now into its seventh year, launched by President Obama back in 2010 and has been all over the world since then, but now really coming back to what you might call its spiritual home in Silicon Valley. We're going to meet all sorts of people, entrepreneurs, investors throughout the uh, course of the show. We've got Tarek Basley to help us do that as well. He's our science and technology editor. I mean, from meeting people already and having a look around Tarek, what type of thing can we expect to see? Well, this Kamal is an extraordinary network event for the startup community. We've got hundreds, literally over 700 young entrepreneurs, all of them with some very smart ideas of how to change the world, how to make money along the way. Mm -hmm. And they've got this opportunity to network with investors, sometimes from very large investment funds that are looking for the next great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what they've set up is a, a, a three days of meetings, uh, sometimes one-on-one -on -one meetings between these two groups, sometimes competitions. For example, they've got this pitching competition, a kind mm -hmm. of, a, a kind of three-minute opportunity for them to pitch their ideas to the investors. Speed dating, basically. Exactly, speed dating <laughs> of the business world. Um, and what we've seen at these sessions is some extraordinary, um, really good ideas from all over the world, from Kenya, from Thailand, um, and, and uh, an, an amazing response actually from the investor community. Yeah. Very positive feedback for a lot of these young people. Brilliant stuff. Well, okay, off you go. Find the next big thing for us and bring it back for counting the cost. Uh, we're going to have a look now just though at uh, one of Tarek's reports from the early stages of the Entrepreneurship Summit and see how it all started out. So uh, what is it like coming back? It's a long way from Accra in Ghana to Palo Alto, California. But for Michael Amankwa, the Global Entrepreneurship Summit is a rare opportunity to meet investors with the power and money to scale up his banking software business. Having a dream such as being, you know, being able to bank every African, that is providing financial services to them and providing insurance services to them, that's to a billion people. You're talking about, look, a service that requires a lot of critical partners, you know, very strategic partners, which also includes not just technology partners, but also investors and the like, because it's going to take a lot of money to make this happen. One part of the event is a speed pitching contest, a three-minute opportunity to impress a panel of industry experts. $65,000 is up for grabs, along with a chance to catch the eye of a potential investor. The winner is a project to bring a new nutrient-rich and more profitable rice variety to market. Our company is a social enterprise from Thailand, and we're working you know, days and nights to really find solution to the poverty of these farmers that are only earning you know, 40 cents per day. We need the support you know, financially, knowledge, all we can get, you know, and you have an incredible uh, model in the Western world of how to scale a business, you know, where, by in where we come from, most businesses just stay very small. So, many of the world's largest startup investors are here at this event. When it comes to innovative ideas, there are plenty of those as all well. Right, so the question is, who benefits most? Is it the young entrepreneurs who take to the stage to try and find funding for their projects? or the investors who want to see their money back, the ideas that will shape the future. We like to think that everyone stands to benefit from the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Investors are making great contacts, the entrepreneurs are making, uh, developing their own networks to improve their own communities. Because we're committed to exporting the idea of entrepreneurship and the American approach to it, we think of it as a purely American uh, spirit that we want to see globalized. The three-day event includes numerous talks, workshops and panel discussions. In a world where some companies are more valuable and influential than nations, maybe it's here the future will be shaped. One of the things that I think we also have to focus on as we think about the opportunity that's here is how we make sure that I, in my, in my mind, I think that the talent is evenly spread around the world but I think opportunity is not spread out evenly around the world. Mm. And so to that extent, I think that I feel an obligation to be able to say to people, how do we have inclusive entrepreneurship? How do we bring our youth and our women into the game? When here in Silicon Valley, we also have to challenge ourselves and we have to ask ourselves, why is it that two thirds of venture capital is coming from three states and only going to 25 zip codes and of that, only about 6% is going to women. We have to also talk about change. Well, and why is that? Why do you think that is? Well, I think because people see they've had success and so now they have revenue that they can invest and they think that success is something that looks like themselves. And we have to challenge what, so that like notion. So like feeds like. 
success breeds success, right? And so if I did it and this is who I am, it must be that I need to find somebody like me to do it again. And what we have to say we'll is, change that then. we have to change that. We have to say, do you know that there may be pain points that you would not recognize that I would experience in a very different way? And those are big, unfettered opportunities that we have to pursue. Mm. So I think we have to challenge ourselves. And what I loved about this morning's session was that they all talked about having an impact. They talked about change, and they talked about more inclusive entrepreneurship. That's the message that I hope really resonates as we leave from here, and that it becomes change for good. We have to ask the industry that knows how to disrupt, to disrupt themselves. Do you think, just a final thought, that this spirit can carry on? Because I was saying this in an earlier interview, that social responsibility, making a difference, this is clearly very important to young entrepreneurs, particularly now. But they can't do that unless their business is successful, unless they make money. So there has to be that capitalist element there, that sort of, that drive to make money. Otherwise, the social responsibility will fall away, it'll die away. I think you're spot on. The idea that these two have to be at odds is a myth. I think that when you have impact in the community and you're having an impact in creating change, I think that from that comes more loyalty, People now want the narrative. They want to know that what they're doing, what they're buying has an impact in their lives. And so I really do believe that those, those that reach forward and say, I'm here to do something good and profit will be my reward versus business is business is business, that is gone. The best way to make money is to make sure that you're really addressing a pain point for others. So we've broken away from the summit just for a little bit and we've come about 20 minutes down the road to the city of Los Altos. I think um, you can safely say this is your average uh, suburban American street. It's called Christ Drive, Los Altos. And that house over there, that is number 2066 Christ Drive. And it's in that, well I would say garage, I think Americans would say garage, in that garage that Steve Jobs founded the company that we now know as Apple. It happened in there. Well, actually, to be fair, there's a little bit of uh, urban myth going on here. Steve Wozniak, who co-founded Apple, has subsequently said, well, no actual design went on there. This was more like an assembly area. They put the computers together there and then took them off to the store to be sold. So Apple maybe wasn't technically founded there, but even he concedes that the symbolism of such a place is very important uh, to the company and Los Altos as a city agrees it actually turned 2066 Chris Drive into a historical site three years ago. Now why am I telling you all of this? Well, because as much as that garage is a symbol of Apple as a company, the whole idea of the garage entrepreneur, the young man or woman who works behind those doors and turns ideas into reality, that is a symbol of Silicon Valley and the way it's built itself up into the behemoth that it is now. Of course, we're in 2016 now. It's a very, very different environment. And I sort of started to wonder, well, does the garage entrepreneur still exist? Do they still sit behind those doors and make things happen out of nowhere? Or is it a completely different playing field? Well, we went to a networking event, an entrepreneur's networking event uh, up in San Francisco, just to talk to a few of these such entrepreneurs to find out how the business works now. There's all types of virtual garages now. So an event like this is a place for, you know, very similar group of people that have founders experiences, founders backgrounds to come together. But I think the new garage is the co-working spaces, the WeWorks, the Galvanizes, the the places where you rent a desk for four hundred dollars a month and you know get together and be around other kind of scrappy entrepreneurs, brainstorming. A lot of teams form there. I think that's kind of the future future garage. Every new construction in San Francisco must have a certain amount of square footage based on the square footage of the building. Mm. They must have a certain amount of square footage devoted to public open space. Mm. And so LinkedIn has a whole, basically their whole first floor of their new building, which is just open, empty tables where you can go and sit around. The way that the global economy is evolving, everybody can be anywhere and be interacting with whoever they need to be. And with all of the tools that you have for productivity, it makes it very easy to you know, stay on top of your business while you're anywhere. I had a startup as well in the past, but actually right now I work in a corporate environment. Mm. So until the idea actually takes off, that's where I'll actually know. So um, it's great having that income that's still coming in un unless you have you know, the opportunity to just you know, concentrate 100%. I think that's why innovation is so important, right? Because it's, it's a very competitive marketplace. So people need to find the best solution and the best solution fast. 
and the solution that actually serves people's needs because if you serve people's needs then you can make money from that right people don't buy or spend money on something they don't need it's never been harder to hire than this year and i've said that every previous year all the way back to, to 2005 so you know competition that nobody is stopping google or apple or you know any of these companies they'll take any talent and so the startup world is competing for that talent so there's you know it, Maybe there was a slight blip on the, the map where we didn't get paid by customers for an extra few months and you make it through that and you know, life moves on and you're back in a bubble. So.